Hi, my name is Mrs. Burgess. Welcome to today's reading lesson. Today we'll be using some nonfiction books and wonder about what's going on in those books. When we wonder about a story, we're asking ourselves questions. We might be asking a question about what we already no, we might be asking ourselves questions about what we have just learned and we might be wondering about things that we haven't heard about yet. So during our stories, we'll be doing a lot of wondering. Today, I might ask you to have some think time. And the other really important thing that we'll be doing today is we'll be turning and talking. Sometimes you'll have someone at your home that you can turn and talk to. You might pretend to use a phone like this, or you can pretend to call me. You might use a stuffy to talk to, and Mrs. Burgess's favorite one is to whisper to your hand. So we'll be doing that during our lesson. We are using nonfiction books today. These are some of the nonfiction books that we've used in other lessons. This one is called A Baby Duck Story. Another book we've used is A Baby Penguin Story. And the last book we used was A Harbor Seal Pup Grows Up. Now please don't worry if you haven't read these books before. You can just think about the other true stories that you know about animals. And then you can think about those too. If we ever talk about other books that we've read during this story and this lesson. Today's book is called A Tiger Cub Grows Up. A Tiger Cub Grows Up, is this book is written by Joan Hewitt. She's the author. She wrote the words for this story. Photographs by Richard Hewitt. Photographs mean real pictures that were taken and the real pictures were put in this nonfiction book. You can see by the covers that this cover and a harbor seal pup grows up are the same. They have the same author, the person that wrote the words, and the same photographer, the person that took the pictures. All right, let's get started. You can see from the cover, there's a baby tiger, a tiger cub on the cover. Now, sometimes on the back of a book, there's something called a summary. And a summary gives us a little bit of information about what we might find in the story. So I'm going to go ahead and read the summary to you. Tara is a tiger cub. She is growing up in a wild animal park. Tara drinks from a bottle. She plays with her trainer. She swims in a pond. Find out about Tara in A Tiger Cub Grows Up. So. What do you wonder already about Tara? Let's take a minute to think. Hmm. Oh, are you wondering? You are, you are. I just heard someone wonder about what is a wild animal park. Hmm. Oh, another, another wonder that I heard was, I wonder how big a tiger cub is. Th those are interesting wonders. I hope maybe we'll find out about those wonders while we read this book. We'll read the first part of this book today. And while we read, we'll sometimes stop and we'll ask ourselves, what have we learned so far? And what are we still wondering? So let's go ahead and start our book, A Tiger Cub Grows Up. We'll start by looking at a few pictures. Now take a look at that cover. Mm. Do you wonder anything in that picture? What do you see in that picture? Oh, I heard that that picture, the tiger cub, doesn't look exactly happy. Let's look at that picture.
I heard someone wonder if that tiger cub is asleep now. These are some of the pictures that we'll be looking at and uh, while I start reading the book, a tiger cub grows up. A tiger cub grows up. In the nursery, Tara is a tiger cub. She was born in a wild animal park. The cub is hungry. She feels the tip of the bottle. She drinks her warm milk. When Tara is nine days old, her eyes open. Grown-up tigers like to swim, but little Tara does not like her first bath. Mary feeds Tara. She talks to the tiger cub. She gives her kisses. Let's stop right here. I'm wondering what you've learned so far, and I'd like you to wonder what you've learned so far. And let's give you a little bit of think time. What have you learned so far? Mmm, I heard someone wonder about a tiger cub's eyes opening when they're nine days old. Another wonder I heard is about Tara's first bath. Why didn't she like it when adult tigers like having a swim? That's really interesting. Let's go ahead and read a little bit more. At night, Mary takes the cub home with her. Tara drinks her milk. She falls asleep. Then Tara wakes up. She's hungry. She wants more milk. Tara drinks until her belly is full. She falls back to sleep. As she sleeps, she grunts and squeals. What is grunting and squealing? Let's go ahead and pretend that we're baby tigers that are asleep and let's grunt and squeal in our sleep. Is that what you sounded like? That's funny, isn't it? Tara is three weeks old. Her baby teeth are coming in. She has pointed teeth for tearing meat. What do you wonder about when you see that picture? And she has rounded teeth for chewing. Chewing feels good, but a plastic tray is hard to hold with chubby paws. What do you see Tara doing in these pictures? I see her chewing too. So let's stop right here. What have we learned so far? Let's think about what we have learned so far and let's also wonder. What kind of wonders do you have? Let's go ahead and turn and talk. And talk about what you've learned so far and talk about what you wonder. I'm gonna give you just a little bit of time. One, two, three, back to me. All right, so I heard a wonder about why does Tara go home with Mary? Why does she have to go home with Mary? I heard someone say 
maybe there's no one to take care of Tara the tiger cub at the wild animal park, so she has to go home with someone that can take care of her. That's a great idea. What's another wonder someone had? Yes, Tara does have two different kinds of teeth. She does have pointed teeth for meat, and she has pointed, uh, rounded teeth for chewing. Yes, I learned that too um, from this book. All right, thank you for sharing. Let's read some more. Each day, Mary shows the cub a piece of meat. Tara does not want to try it. Not yet. Hmm. Playtime is a time to learn. Can Tara crawl over Mary's leg? How hard will Mary let her bite? Tara is three months old. Mary takes Tara to the animal doctor. It's time for a checkup. Do you know what a checkup is? A checkup is when uh, Tara goes to visit a veterinarian, an animal doctor, to make sure that she's healthy. You might have gone to a checkup too. The animal lights are, the, the, oh, the bright lights are scary. The tiger cubs roars. Howr. Let's try it together. Howr. Tara is healthy and she is old enough to play outside. Let's stop here again and then let's think to ourselves, what have we learned so far? And what do we wonder about what we've just read in the book? Go ahead and turn and talk now. And I'll give you just a minute to think about what we've learned so far and what you still wonder. One, two, three, back to me. I'm wondering if someone wants to share what they've learned so far in the book, A Tiger Cub Grows Up. Oh, you've heard, you've learned that a tiger cub needs milk. What else has someone else learned in this book so far? Yes. Yes, you've learned that a tiger cub needs a lot of milk. Any other learnings that we've had from this book so far? Yes, a tiger cub does not like a bath, but an adult tiger does like to swim in the water. We've learned a lot of things so far. Now, does anybody have any wonderings? Is anyone still wondering about some of the things that we've heard in the book? Oh, yes. You're wondering why a tiger cub does not eat, like to um, chew on meat, even though they have the right kind of sharp teeth for chewing meat. Yes, I'm also wondering where is Tara's mother and father? Do Tara's mother and father also live in the wild animal farm? Those are really, really um, interesting wonderings. Let's go ahead and just stop one more time. Is there anything else that you are wondering about? Turn and talk to a partner and ask them if you have, tell them if you have any more wonderings about the book a tiger cub grows up. Okay, one, two, three, back to me. Thank you for, um, for sharing and turning and talking. Does anyone else have any other wonders? Yes, you're wondering um, what will happen when Tara grows big. Yes, maybe we'll find out some more information about Tara when we read the next part of the book in our next lesson. Does anyone else have any wonders? 
Well, someone is wondering how big is Tara right now? Um, yes, and we can look at the pictures and we can see that she's about this big. Right now she's about this big. You can see this is an adult's feet and legs and you can see that Tara is about this big. All right. Now, when we read this book, one of the words um, that I was thinking about was the word wild. We used the word wild when we talked about Tara living in a wild animal park. And when an animal is wild, it usually lives in nature, um, away from people, in places like the jungle, forest, or ocean. All right, so can anyone tell me? Um, let's just think for a second. Can anyone tell me um, the name of their favorite wild animal? Just think for a second. What is the name of your favorite wild animal? One, two, three, back to me. All right. And the name of your favorite wild animal is a, a fox? Hmm, where does a fox live? A fox lives in the forest, so it's wild. Right. So let's let's play a little game. Is a deer that lives in the forest wild or tame? Go ahead and turn and talk to a partner and tell them why you think a deer that lives in the forest is wild or tame. One, two, three, back to me. All right. So tell me, could someone volunteer to tell me whether they think a deer that lives in the forest is wild or tame? You're right. A deer is wild because it lives in the forest. All right, let's, let's try another question. Is a rabbit that sleeps in a basket under your bed wild or tame? Why don't you go ahead and turn and talk. Is a rabbit that lives in a basket under your bed wild or tame? And tell, tell the other person why. One, two, three, back to me. All right. Oh, and you'd like to answer the question about that? And you think that a rabbit is Oh, is tame because it's been trained and gentle and lives with people. It's not wild. Great. That, that's great. Okay, one more. Let's give you one more example. So let's think. When an animal is wild, it usually lives in nature away from people. And it lives in places like the jungle, forest, or ocean. So we can have wild animals like these... Um, things that live in the ocean, a swordfish, an octopus, and a whale, and they're wild because they live in the ocean. Now, an animal that is tame is usually gentle and is, and is used to living with people, and um, it's not wild. This animal is tame. So one more, an animal that lives in a cage at the zoo. Are they wild or all they t are, are they tame? Turn and talk to your partner and tell them why you think an animal that lives in a zoo in a cage is wild or tame. All right, one, two, three, back to me. All right, let's everyone say it all at once. An animal that lives in a zoo is used to living with people, so it must be tame. Thank you very much for talking about wild and tame. Now let's talk about our independent reading. We're gonna have a job to do now. Um, when we do our independent reading, we want to make sure that we get a nonfiction book. Um, when we do our, not our independent reading, we wanna get a book about something that's true. And while we're reading that book, we're going to wonder all the way through the book. We're gonna wonder about what we're learning and we're gonna wonder about what we still want to know after we read the words and look at the pictures in that book. If you do not have a 
um, any books at home that you can use for this job. You can go um, for books that you can read at home. You can visit the Seattle Public Schools website. You can go to seattlepublicschools.org, select student portal, click on academic tools. You might use tumble books or you might use Pebble Go. You might have used these two things in the library or in your own classroom or visit Scholastic Learn at home. There you can get books online that you can use for this job. When you have your independent reading job, you'll have three things to do. Job number one is to read your book and then wonder through the book about what you learned and what you um, wonder about the words and pictures that you see. No, job number two will be to tell somebody about that book and wonder if you have any more wonders. Job number three, tell that person if you like the book or you didn't like the book and tell them why. So when you're doing your independent reading, you can always think about your sound chart. If you have a uh, sight word card, you can look at your sight word cards to make your reading smooth. So um, when you do your assignment, you'll also have a writing job. When you do your writing job, you can use a book like a composition book, you can use a plain piece of paper, or if you have a printed package of a work that's from our schools, you can use the printed worksheet that tells you exactly what I just talked about with job number one, to read your book. Job number two, you can draw and write about your book and tell what you learned, what you wondered, and you can tell somebody about whether you like the book or not. So you have many ways to do your job. But your first job is to find a nonfiction book, a book about true things, read it, and write about it. Thank you very much for joining us today for the reading lesson, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.